Jerry Chang invested $20,000 at 14% interest compounded semi-annually for 8 years. What is the amount of compound interest Jerry earned? So here Jerry has invested an amount of $20,000 for a period of 8 years. So the principal amount is equal to $20,000 and this amount has been invested for a period of 8 years. So let's say this is the end of first year, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. Now during this period of eight years, Jerry is going to get an interest of 14%. Now it has not been given whether it is per annum per month. So we'll assume that this is 14% per annum. So the rate of interest R is equal to 14% per annum. Now this interest is being compounded and it has been compounded semi-annually. So semi-annually means every half yearly. That means every six months. So what that means is that at six months, so let's say this is 0.5 years, the interest will be added to the principal and then that amount, which is principal plus interest, will become the principal for the second compounding period, which is this part. So this becomes P1 which is principal for the second compounding period. Similarly, whatever is the interest accrued during the second compounding period here will be added to the principal at the beginning of that period which is P1 and then the amount gained here let's say it is P2 will be equal to P1 plus the interest during this period which is let's say I1 and then this P2 will become the principal for the third compounding period which is this period here. So we know that the compounding is happening every six months but what is the rate of interest for this compounding period? So we have been given 14% per annum so 14% is for 12 month period but our compounding period is six months. Now we know that the rate of interest is proportional to the time. So for 12 months, the rate is 14%. So for six months, what is the rate? So cross multiplication, X multiplied by 12 is equal to 14 multiplied by six, or X is equal to 14 multiplied by six divided by 12. 6 1s are 6, 6 2s are 12, 2 1s are 2, 2 7s are 14, so x is equal to 7%. So the rate of interest per compounding period is 7%. Now with this information, we can use the formula for compound interest, which is amount, so the formula is for the amount, which is equal to the principal plus the interest is equal to P into bracket 1 plus R divided by 100 to the power N. Now here P is the principal at the beginning of the period which is $20,000. N is the number of compounding periods. Now we have been given that the time frame for investment is 8 years but the compounding is happening every 6 months. So the number of compounding periods is 8 multiplied by 2 because every year will be split into two compounding periods. So 8 multiplied by 2 which is 16. So n is 16 and r is the rate of interest 
per compounding period. So the compounding period is six months and the rate of interest is 7% for these six months. So R is equal to seven. So now let's put in these values and then find out the amount and then we'll find out the compound interest. So R A is equal to P which is 20,000 multiplied by one plus R which is seven divided by 100 to the power N which is 16. So this is equal to 20,000 one plus 0 0.07 to the power 16. This is equal to 20,000 1.07 to the power 16. So let me put my calculator here. So 1.07 to the power of 16 multiplied by 20 thousand this is equal to fifty nine thousand forty three dollars so this is equal to fifty nine thousand and forty three dollars so this is the total amount which includes principal and the interest but the question that we have is to find out the compound interest so what we'll do is we'll subtract the principal from this amount and we'll get the interest so interest is equal to 59,043 minus 20,000 so this is equal to 39,043 dollars so here let's try to analyze one thing which is had this compounding been done annually instead of semi-annually what would be the interest with the same data provided so let's try to do this as a interesting activity to see what is the difference in interest if it is compounded annually versus semi-annually so in that case again plugging the values in this formula so a is equal to P is the same that is 20,000 1 plus R so in that case because we are compounding annually the rate of interest is 14 percent so 14 divided by 100 and n is the number of compounding periods so that will become 8 so this is equal to 20,000 1 plus 0 0.14 to the power 8 this is equal to 20,000 1.14 raised to the power 8 so let me pull my calculator here so 1.14 to the power 8 multiplied by 20,000 and this is equal to 57,051. So this is equal to 57,051 dollars. And this is the amount. So the interest is equal to 57,051 minus 20,000, which will be 37,051 dollars. So if we were compounding annually, the interest is lower than the amount if we compounded semi-annually. Now this is interesting so let's do one more thing so suppose we were compounding the interest quarterly that means every three months so let's try to do that. So in that case amount is equal to 20,000 multiplied by 1 plus so now the rate of interest will be half of the semi-annual rate which was 7% or one-fourth of the annual rate which is 14%. So half of 7% is 3.5. So 1 plus 
divide by 100 and raise to the power n so now the compounding period will be 8 multiplied by 4 because 8 years and there will be 4 compounding periods in a year so every quarter so 1 2 3 4 so 8 fours are 32 so to the power 32 so this is equal to 20,000 now this will become 0 0.035 and add it to 1 so that will be 1.035 to the power 32 so let's calculate this so 1.035 to the power 32 multiplied by 20,000 and this is equal to 60,134 so the amount is 60,134 dollars and interest is equal to so this much minus 20,000 so that will be 40,134 dollars so here if we compound annually our interest is 37,051 if we compound semi-annually our interest is 39,043 and if we compound the interest quarterly the interest is 40,000 so basically with the same data as you keep on increasing the number of compounding periods you will get more interest